Hi there, this is Daniel Morshain from the International Institute for Sustainable Development and the NAP Global Network. And today I'm going to tell you about the Capacity Building Knowledge to Action Days in this episode of Capacity Building Stories by the PCCB Network. This series started a year ago, right around this time. Together with the PCCB and a number of partners, we organized this workshop during the UNFCCC Regional Climate Weeks first in the Latin America and the Caribbean region, and then in the Asia-Pacific region. The COVID-19 crisis changed our plans for the third workshop that was set to take place during the Africa Climate Week in early 2020. But it didn't stop us. We are now organizing this workshop virtually, and I would say both partners and participants have shown the same level of excitement and engagement as the previous ones, if not more. Participants in the workshop are invited by the organizing partners from a diverse array of institutions at the national and regional levels. These include academia and governmental organizations as the two main groups, as well as representatives from NGOs, international organizations, youth and women organizations, and the private sector. Before we go into details about that, let me give you a bit of a background on what this African event plus the previous events in Latin America and the Caribbean and the Asia Pacific have been about. This workshop were focused on capacities needed uh, for bridging gaps from the climate knowledge to climate action. There is a need, an important need to not only focus on building capacities at national level or regional level, but on ways and means to retain those capacities. There have been several mentions about actors who have a longer stay or permanence at national level, for example, the academia or universities. We also know we need to move beyond the world of research to be able to connect with climate information, services, and real-life decision-making. Being able to embed the capacity in climate action in this decisive decade needed to realize co-production, the articulation of what science can offer and what the world and society really needs. One of the things we want to do in these events is to un understand what are the capacity building gaps and needs that are there in order to propose solutions, in order to say, okay, we now understand better the problem in a participatory way um, because we have had input from many different stakeholders, and then we start thinking about solutions. That's one of the things we want to achieve. We want to, likewise, open the window, open the opportunity for what comes under the umbrella of capacity building. We want to make sure that capacity building is not seen as a top-down activity, as a north to south uh, activity whereby the knowledge and the expertise from the north is understood as the most valuable, but rather we want to make sure the capacity building is seen as a flowing conversation between everyone and re uh, where everyone recognizes that their capacity needs to be improved in some ways to enable, to facilitate really uh, adaptation efforts, climate efforts to move forward in, in a good way, in an effective way and in a just way. So we have just finished our event, uh, our Knowledge to Action Capacity Building event for the Africa region. And uh, I think it went quite well. I'm very happy with it. I'm sitting here with uh, colleagues uh, from the Mohammed VI Foundation, Ayman Cherkawi, and uh, from IDRC, Marie Landry. And we um, would like to discuss a little bit about this. So I'm, I'd love to hear, Ayman, your views on, on what you felt about the event. How, how did it meet your expectations? Did, do you think uh, we moved in the right direction? What, what, what did you think? Well, I feel great. I think it was a, a very good event. I think uh, it met and exceeded my expectations. I think it was an important uh, space uh, to exchange around uh, important issue of capacity building, of course, but across communities of practice, 
Uh, I also strongly appreciated that uh, there was an effort for inclusion through uh, providing uh, live translation uh, that enabled more access uh, to experts that uh, mm -hmm. would be excluded otherwise. Of course, uh, we are uh, living through challenging times. Of course, there are issues of connectivity in the African continent. So uh, those are elements we are very well aware of. So there are limitations that exist. But at the same time, I think we, we had uh, some great conversations. Uh, I particularly appreciate how connected uh, this event was in terms of the richness of what was discussed to the very concept of knowledge to action as a bridge and I think clearly this uh, this event was uh, was a bridge uh, to moving from knowledge to action on one hand but also connecting knowledge back to action so that the action is informed but knowledge is also also learned from, from, from action. And finally, the spirit of partnership was evident uh, across the continent, globally and across sectors. So I'm quite excited about this event. Thanks very much, Ayam, and I agree with you. I think there was a really an important meeting of minds. And uh, um, Marie-Ève, over to you. What are your initial impressions of what just took place for almost three hours? Yes. Well, I was uh, greatly surprised. I think it was a very ambitious agenda that we had uh, uh, for that uh, two an hour, uh, three hour session. Um, I think it was uh, yeah, very interesting to have a diversity of stakeholders uh, that do take part to the that um, continuum between uh, knowledge and action and, and do need to express and have a space to uh, um, um, yeah, identify what are the, the, the needs, the gaps, the opportunities that they find. Um, and uh, in the African context more specifically, I think it was an interesting. It was interesting to see um, also the the focus on uh, towards like knowledge of solutions, like trying to focus on on that more than on on the problems themselves, um, which I think is very inspiring. Um, mm, I wonder what's next now. But uh, for now, I'm, I'm I'm also personally very happy that uh, it seems to have grown. My feeling is it has evolved quite a bit in a very positive way from our discussions in these three events, you know, the one starting in Latin America, Asia Pacific, and now Africa. Evolve in the sense that we've touched on similar and also we, we've come through different entry points to the issues. In each region, we have different challenges, we have different um, sets of uh, existing networks and partnerships and so on. And I think they are, uh, in a sense, quite complementary in the sense that um, we, at the end of the day, end up with an ingredient that will bake three different cakes, if I put it like that, but that is necessary, setting the foundation for a proper, uh, a just approach to undertaking research, undertaking a capacity strengthening, capacity building. Uh, first, I wanted to react to the cake analogy that Daniel made. I think it's such a great analogy. Uh, and and I, I believe that it is about uh, sharing the cake, yes, but it's also about making the cake bigger and, and sh exchanging recipes, right, so that we mm -hmm. can make have the best tasting cake ever, right? And I think this is very much in the spirit of those uh, regional uh, knowledge to action days that, that have taken place and we're very proud to, to be partnering with the uh, African region one in particular, but understanding that it's so very well connected to the other regions as the challenges, of course, and opportunities are context specific, but there's also so many synergies learnings uh, that can be shared uh, from one region to, to the other. Add to the cake analogy, sorry, just for a second. <laughs> we can have a similar basic steps of making a cake or a, bit a bread in different regions, but the secret ingredients, the specific things that are typical to each region will still make it taste different and, and that's important too. There we go, absolutely. So dear colleagues, if I asked you, how would you wrap up this whole process into a word or a sentence? That's a big task for you. What would you say? On est ensemble. It's in our mandate to build up the research capabilities and innovative skills required to solve the problems facing our world. We know it is integral to realizing climate action and the global goal on adaptation. We know that we need to move beyond training. It's not just about providing scholarship to early career researchers, but being able to provide experiential learning opportunities and exchanges. 
to practice one's skills and learn from peers. We want to promote dialogues, experiences among different stakeholders, recognizing that, you know, it doesn't serve any purpose if you have academia talking in their spaces, if you have NGOs talking in their spaces, and if you have government really not engaging with this full on. So we want to create those mixed spaces where all these conversations take place and therefore have the potential to not only produce better solutions, but also to come up with, um, to start building trust among the institutions, for institutions to recognize what it is that others do. Sometimes we don't even, we're not even sure what others do and how they can uh, help our, our case, our, our ideas, our cause. So we're trying to break these barriers and, and in doing so also build partnerships, build trust among the institutions. And finally, uh, take a critical look as well at research practices. Research is an important and fundamental element of uh, development, to speak broadly, but the way that the research is done and how it can be done in very participatory ways, very collaborative ways, very transdisciplinary ways, is incredibly important. Doing that kind of research to promote better climate action, more efficient climate action, more just climate action, is something that we really want to uh, contribute to in these dialogues. IDRC researchers have participated in the Knowledge to Action Day. Many of the recommendations have been really very important. One of them, it was the need to understand the capacity building gap from the private sector in the Latin America and the Caribbean region. We have took note of those and we make an arrangement for assignment to hire two experts that will be addressing those gaps. We have agreed to replicate this experience and now we are moving the same assessment mapping those demands, in this case from the Southeastern Africa and Southeastern Asian countries. This is really a good example and we are quite excited to continue. These uh, Knowledge to Action days is that they may be days, but they're one step in a process, right? We're, we're projecting ourselves, we're, we're looking forward. And the, the example that was provided was um, a coalition uh, that got started at the end of a summit. And then over the next two years, having first established uh, that, that network, that trust between the stakeholders, after the event, the, the people that got to meet, that got to know each other, they started working to, like, together, collaborating, and over the midterm, they've been able to establish a coalition that has had results, that is uh, looking forward to contributing to the NDC uh, revision, pro re revision process uh, at the country. So I think uh, this is quite, from my, from my perspective, inspirational and very aligned with uh, what seem to be, according to me, uh, objectives uh, uh, that we have going forward. That's all from us. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to everyone who was part of these events. Uh, thanks to the PCCB network for sharing these stories. Um, see you soon, everyone, right here on this channel with new stories and capacity building and knowledge from all over the world. So talk to us, share your stories, share your wisdom. Thank you. <laughs>